بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أما بعد All praise is due to Allah alone May peace and blessings be upon the Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and upon his family and his companions Brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of Lessons from Islamic History Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh we talked about the plans of the Munafiqeen and the plots of the Munafiqeen and what the Munafiqoon, the hypocrites, those who showed Islam outwardly but kept disbelief on the inside those people like Abdullah ibn Saba, the Jew who lied and who twisted and who plotted against the Muslims and how these plots formed and what these plots were intended to do and that the core purpose behind the plan of Abdullah ibn Saba was to misguide the outer regions. They found that a major source for this rebellion was Kufa. And another major source was Basra. And another major source being Egypt. And Abdullah ibn Saba himself was traveling around Egypt, inciting hatred against Uthman and the rulers and the governors, those companions who were appointed by Uthman radiallahu anhu. They agreed that they would carry themselves to Medina and demand the removal and the abdication of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala an. So they decided to come at the time of Hajj and they would disguise themselves because they knew of course the Muslim army who was out waging war and the Muslim army who was out defending the lands if they got wind of a group of people who were coming from Egypt or Basra or Kufa to attack the Muslims in Medina or to attack Uthman ibn Affan in Medina radiallahu an, they knew that the army would crush them. So they hid within the Hajj pilgrims. They hid within the Hajj pilgrims and they went out. And when they reached Medina, the people went for Hajj. And this left Medina in a vulnerable state. And they arrived with their demands. They came from Kufa from Basra and from Egypt in different groups. The Egyptians had four groups within them, each group coming from a different place or breaking up into a different organization and meeting Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu with a number of thousand of rebels who had come to demand the abdication and the removal of Uthman or to threaten him with death. Abdullah ibn Saba had not only sown seeds of hatred against Uthman, but to each region he had spread lies about who should be the better ruler to overtake Uthman. He had told the people of Egypt to demand Ali ibn Abi Talib and the people of Kufa to demand Az Zubair ibn al Awam and the people of Basra to demand Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiallahu anhum. Why? Because if they all came demanding one, perhaps the Muslims would agree and be strong underneath Ali radiallahu an. But as long as they were all demanding different rulers in place, this was a chance for them to be able to maintain the internal division amongst the Muslims, such that even if Uthman was to give up the Khilafah, they knew that the next person would suffer the same fate, that the next person would be required to face the same kind of rebellion that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu was about to face. None of these individuals were the Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. None of these rebels who came to Medina were from the Sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Allah azza wa jal protected the Sahaba from this. But they were ignorant rebels and zalimun, oppressive people who knew nothing and who were nothing but servants of Abdullah ibn Saba, the Jew Munafiq who came to misguide the people away from Islam and continue his treachery against Islam and the Muslims. 
Uthman knew of their approach to Medina before they arrived. And who did Uthman send out but Ali ibn Abi Talib? Uthman himself and Ali radiallahu an went out to meet the rebels to discuss with them and to try to convince them, knowing that the majority of them were ignorant people, to convince them and to discuss with them what the problem was and to show them that the rumors were false. Every single issue that they had, Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu an dealt with it. He recited the Quran to them. He brought Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an to debate with them and discuss with them. Issue by issue from the Quran and the Sunnah, they proved that every single thing that Uthman was doing was in accordance to the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They proved that the grazing animals that were set aside by Uthman was in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They showed that Uthman was simply continuing the policy of Umar radiallahu an, and bit by bit. The rebels began to become convinced. Even then, Uthman began to agree to some of their demands in order to reduce the trials and tribulations amongst the Muslims. He agreed no longer to give any of the war booty to the people who had participated in the battle extra to what they were given in the norms of Islam. He agreed that the ones who had been banished could return home. He agreed that he would employ people of honesty and ability. Of course, he did all of these things anyway, but he agreed with them to give them even more confidence. They felt happy and confident that they had received false news, that it was not true, and that in fact, Uthman radiallahu an was indeed the just ruler that we all know that he was. Uthman made a deal with each individual party and each individual party turned away from Medina and set off home. Imagine the people are going for Hajj. The people are going for Hajj and what are these rebels and fools doing? Except misguiding the people with their foolish demands and their accusations against the companions of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Uthman dealt with it and likewise Ali radiallahu anhu dealt with it and they went back. And it was then that Abdullah ibn Saba saw his plan fail. Every single thing that he had planned, everything that he had worked long and hard for, everything that Umar had prevented him from doing was in front of him then. What is Abdullah ibn Saba going to do? He needs a drastic plan in order to get the rebels to come back and kill Uthman, which is his original aim for Uthman to be killed. Now the rebels are going back seeing the praise of Uthman. MashaAllah, what a wonderful ruler Uthman is, what a just ruler Uthman is. Those who had wanted Ali ibn Abi Talib, they came back saying that, look, even Ali ibn Abi Talib is saying what a good ruler Uthman is. We were mistaken. Let's go back to our towns. He needed something drastic and he needed something quick. So Abdullah ibn Saba hatched his plan. And it is one of the greatest trials that have been hatched against the Muslims and one of the greatest plans that have been hatched against the Muslims that he wrote letters to the governor of Uthman in Egypt from Uthman and stamped with the seal of Uthman, forged letters commanding the governors to kill the leaders of the rebellion when they returned. These letters could never have come from Uthman radiallahu anhu. It's impossible to believe that these letters could have come from Uthman. First and foremost, because the very ruler that Uthman was writing to was on his way to Medina. And Uthman knew of this. Didn't make any sense. But it was all staged as a show. Staged as a show in order to get those rebels to believe that they were being betrayed by Uthman. So Abdullah ibn Saba, himself and his allies in this evil plot, they combined together to produce a forged letter from Uthman. Forged letters commanding that the leaders of the rebellion be killed and that all of the agreements of Uthman be broken. Letters were sent similarly to the other rulers of Basra and Kufa. At this point, they didn't simply send the letters because the rulers of Uthman would never have accepted these letters anyway. But what they did is they sent them with a rider. 
and the rider wove in and out, in and out of the army, drawing attention to himself, drawing attention so that the rebels immediately thought, this is very strange, why is this man keep coming near to us? So they captured him. When they captured him, he put up a faint attempt to stop them searching him, and he made it very clear that he was carrying something secret from Uthman. All of this was staged. They took out the letter, they saw that Uthman had betrayed them, that Uthman was going to kill them, that Uthman was going to have them imprisoned, and Uthman was going to break all of his promises. And their ignorance and their stupidity caused them to believe the truth of what Abdullah ibn Saba said to them. This complete lack of Iman, this lack of belief, this lack of trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. And they believed it. And so they all returned in order to camp themselves around Medina and in order to force Uthman to either resign or to be killed. Inshallah, after the break, we want to talk about the eventual death of Uthman and the events that followed it. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Explore the options. Match the qualities. Assure the success. success. What happens at school, or more specifically, what happens inside the classroom? The classroom. The classroom. Good qualities of classrooms. Interactive, challenging, collaborative, distributive focus, student-centered. Let's together examine the quality of education that is provided to our children. To judge this quality precisely, join me on Peace TV. Join Dr. Mandu Muhammad in Teaching at School tomorrow at 4 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, and misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulated scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's the right to know the truth. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik. Tonight at 9 p.m. and repeat telecast at 7.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Zain Pika and Daud Wonsby Ali. Hey kids, time is very precious. This life is a gift from Allah. Utilize this gift for here and hereafter. Enjoy this gift in the light of the Quran and Hadith. Enjoy Islam with us, Zain and Dawood. Enjoying Islam with Zain and Dawood every Monday at 7.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back after the break. We're talking about the killing of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala an. After the rebels returned, Uthman protested his innocence. Ali ibn Abi Talib made a statement radiallahu an that he knew something was amiss. He knew something was wrong when all of the rebels returned at the same time. He knew it was staged. How could it not be staged when every single rebel group returned at the same time? When letters were sent from Aisha, letters were sent from Ali, letters were sent from companions, falsely attributed to other companions, saying that the situation in Medina was such that there needed to be a rebellion against Uthman. Uthman denied it, Ali denied it, Aisha denied it, radiallahu anhum. 
But in the end, they refused to believe them because they were ignorant zalimeen. They were oppressive individuals who were foolish and who didn't follow the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet They came to Uthman and they demanded, O oh, Uthman, give up the Khilafah or we will kill you. Uthman refused to give it up and said, I will never take off the garment that Allah has given me to wear. And this was the advice of the Prophet ﷺ to Uthman radiallahu an. The Prophet ﷺ said that there will come a group of oppressive people. Do not take off the garment that Allah has given you to wear. I.e. do not give up the Khilafah for them. And had Uthman given up the Khilafah, they would have repeated this with every single Khalifa, one after the other, and Islam would have been finished. But he stuck to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, to the advice of the Prophet ﷺ, who said to him, do not take off the garment that Allah has given you to wear. Ibn Umar showed his fiqh and his understanding. Coming to Uthman, he said, look at what these people are saying. They're saying, give it up and do not kill yourself. Coming to Uthman and Uthman said to him, look at what these people are saying. They're saying, give it up and do not kill yourself. Ibn Umar said to him, if you give it up, are you going to live forever in this world? Uthman said, no. He said, if you do not give it up, can they do anything worse to you than kill you? Uthman said, no. He said, are they the ones who decide whether you go to Jannah or to Hellfire? He said, no. He said, I do not think you should take off a garment that Allah has given you to wear. Otherwise, it will become a precedent. And every time a people dislike their Khalifa, they will kill him. Look at the knowledge of Abdullah ibn Umar. Look at his fiqh and his understanding in the religion of Islam. Uthman took to reminding the people of his virtues. Took to reminding the people of his companionship of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that the Prophet Sallallahu said while I was there, calm down, O Hira, there is none upon you except a Prophet, a Siddiq, and a martyr. He talked about the time on Uhud when the Prophet Sallallahu said the same. He talked about the Prophet Sallallahu saying, this is my hand and this is the hand of Uthman. About the Prophet Sallallahu saying, who will incorporate his house into the masjid? and give him in return a house in Jannah. He talked about when the Prophet ﷺ said, who will spend today in his charity will be accepted. He showed the things the Prophet ﷺ had said about him, but the rebels refused to accept. They continued in their demand, being stirred up by the munafiqoon, by the hypocrites, that Uthman either give up the Khilafah or be killed. What do you think the other companions were doing at this time? Those noble companions, wallah, every single one of them pledged to defend. Uthman radiallahu an, the first of whom was Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an. Ibn Asakir narrates from Jabir ibn Abdullah that Ali sent word to Uthman saying, I have 500 men with shields. Give me permission to protect you against the people for you have not done anything that would make it permissible to shed your blood. He said, may you be rewarded with good. I do not want blood to be shed for my sake. As Zubair ibn al-Awwam, he came to Uthman and he had with him Al-Hasan ibn Ali, Abu Huraira, Abdullah ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Zubair. Look at the giants who came. Abu Huraira radiallahu an, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu anhuma. Coming together, we are ready to defend you. As Zubair sends his greetings and says, I am still loyal to you and I'm not changed or retracted. If you wish, I will join you in your house and I will be one of the people there. Or if you wish, I will stay where I am. And the tribe of Banu Amr ibn Awf have promised to come to my place. Then they will follow whatever instructions I give them. I will bring a great army to defend you, O Uthman. When Uthman heard this, he said, Allahu Akbar. Praise be to Allah who has protected my brother. Give him my salam and tell him, I appreciate what you said. May Allah ward harm off from me by you. When Abu Hurairah read the message, he stood up and said, shall I not tell you what my ears heard from the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? They said, yes. He said, I bear witness that I heard the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say 
after I am gone, there will be turmoil and other things. We said, where should we turn to safety, O Messenger of Allah? He said to the trustworthy one and his group. And he pointed to Uthman ibn Affan. The people stood and said, now we know what we should do. Give us permission to fight against them. But Uthman said, I urge anyone who obeys me, anyone who says he's in obedience to me, I forbid you from fighting. Al-Mughira ibn Shu'bah, Abdullah ibn Zubair, Ka'b ibn Malik al-Ansari, Zayd ibn Thabit al-Ansari, a group of the companions, one after the other. Al-Hasan ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib. He said, Al-Hasan came, the son of Ali radiallahu anhu. He said, should I unsheath my sword? Uthman said to him, I will never be able to justify shedding your blood before Allah. How can I stand before Allah and say I was the reason for Al-Hasan, the grandson of the Prophet Sallallahu to die? Put your sword back and go back to your father. Abdullah ibn Umar came. He begged Uthman permission to defend him and fight for him. But Uthman urged him to leave the house in case fighting began and it was said that Uthman was the first to cause fighting amongst the Muslims. Abu Huraira entered the house. He said to Uthman, O Amir al-Mu'mineen, now it is the time to fight. Uthman turned to him and said to him, O Abu Huraira, would you be happy to kill all the people and me? Abu Huraira said, no. He said, by Allah, if you killed a single man, it would be as if you killed all of the people. So he went back and he did not fight. And according to one narration, Abu Huraira had his sword in his hand until Uthman told him not to fight. The companions gave Uthman the chance of running to go to Makkah. They said, we will safeguard you out and take you to Makkah and they will not dare to fight you in Makkah. Again, Uthman refused. Again, Uthman did not want to be the cause of fitna. Uthman did not want to be the cause of disobeying the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uthman did not want the Muslims to be attacked because of him. He didn't want the blood of the likes of Abu Huraira and Abdullah ibn Umar and Hassan ibn Ali and Ali ibn Abi Talib to be sacrificed because of him. But look at those companions. Every single one of them was ready to defend Uthman. And the only reason they refused is because Uthman forbade them explicitly from fighting for his sake. Uthman radiallahu an initially was allowed to go out and lead the people in the prayer. And then after that, they forbade him from leaving his house. The rebels themselves led the prayer and the companions were reluctant to pray behind them. On the last day of the siege, Uthman radiallahu anhu saw a dream. He was fasting on that day and he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Abu Bakr and Umar. He saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam say to him, O oh, Uthman, Come and break your fast with us. O oh, Uthman, come and break your fast with us. And Uthman was killed on that day. The rebels attacked the house and they were confronted by Al Hassan ibn Ali. Remember this Al Hassan ibn Ali, radiallahu an, Abdullah ibn Zubair, Muhammad ibn Talha, Marwan ibn al Hakam, Sa'id ibn al As, and other sons of the Sahaba. Fighting broke out. And Uthman called to them saying, Allah, Allah, I don't want you to defend me. But they insisted. And Uthman's slaves came in to defend them, but he told them not to do that. And he commanded every single one of them to refrain. Because Uthman knew that he was going to become a martyr. He had seen the Prophet wasallam tell him to come and break the fast with him on that day. Uthman's own wife put out her hand to stop the rebels from killing him. And they cut off her fingers. Uthman was killed with the Mus'haf in his hand. The Mus'haf that he wrote with his own hands radiallahu an, on the ayah that he had written for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, stopped at the ayah. They attacked Uthman radiallahu an while he was reading the Mus'haf. He read, Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa. We have not sent down this Qur'an to you to cause you distress. And in the end, they spilled his blood onto the Mus'haf that was in front of him with the words, فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ اللَّهُ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Allah will suffice you against them. And Allah is the All-Hearer, the All-Knower. This was the death of Uthman radiallahu anhu. 
the murder of Uthman, the rightful Khalifa of the Muslims, radiallahu anhu arda. But this was the decree that Allah Azza wa had decreed, and the plan that Allah Azza wa had planned. And Allah Azza wa is the best of planners. Allah Azza wa wished to try the Muslims with something, and the Muslims were tried. But our belief regarding those rebels is that they were oppressive individuals who had no right to do what they did. If you find people speaking ill of Uthman, know that this person is an evil innovator. If you find a person speaking evil of Ali radiallahu an, know this person is an evil innovator. If you find someone speaking evil of Muawiyah radiallahu an, know this person is an evil innovator. We love all of the companions and we recognize their contribution to Islam. Until the next episode, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.